Warning, tonight's episode contains explicit fabric fondling. Some scenes may not be suitable for non-quilters. Viewer's discretion is advised. So tonight's quilt uses these beautiful charm packs. Sometimes I just like to come downstairs to my quilting studio and just look at them and feel them and see how pretty and soft they are. It's just, I don't know, it's just a moment. Don't judge, I mean, I know you do it too, right? Feeling the fabric and feeling how nice and soft it is and the pretty colors. My family just doesn't understand, but they can't, they're not quilters. They're not fabric fondlers like I am. But what I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna use these beauties. You're beautiful and you're beautiful and you're beautiful. I'm gonna use all these beautiful charm squares in a quilt that combines charm squares and this beautiful background fabric. This is gonna make my stars. Oh, I'm getting excited. And then this bright blue binding. Now, we know I don't love binding, but this is gonna pop. I think it's gonna look fantastic. Well, I better stop fondling these charm squares and get to sewing. So even though all those gorgeous, soft, beautiful charm squares are already cut. I still need to cut this fabric because it's gonna form the stars of my quilt. I'm gonna need some big squares and some little squares. So I'm gonna start with my strips and then turn and cut. It always makes me feel a little bit like a hibachi chef or something. Pretty soon I'll be flipping it in the air to you. I wonder if my charm squares are just a little jealous I'm spending extra time with this fabric. I try to tell them I love them all the same, but sometimes they just think they don't get enough quality time. It's okay, here, put you right here. You're good. These are the wrong width, so we're gonna trim them down just a little bit more. <sighs> I promise I know how to read a ruler. One, two, three quarters. There we go. That's not a way you should rotary cut, but every once in a while you have to get it done. Mm, so pretty. These smaller squares, believe it or not, are actually gonna be points on my star, and these bigger squares I'm gonna cut are gonna be the center. Just a few more small ones. All right, let's make some stars. So I'm gonna make the star block and all I need are first to pick out my favorite prints, my, well, my favorite for right now, and I'm gonna lay them out basically like a nine patch. I'm gonna try to make this scrappy. I'm gonna try not to get too distracted by how pretty the fabric is. Gosh, isn't that a pretty blue? Man, that's nice. Anyway, lay that out, but I need to remember I have to have star points or points to my star. So I have the outside of my star. This one I just cut is gonna be this very center, but I need to turn these into some points and that's where these little guys come in handy. And I'm gonna make those with the stitch and flip technique where we draw a line, sew a line, and then iron it. So these points are gonna go on these four blocks right here. So I can put these away for now. Don't worry, you'll be back soon and start working on my points. So what I'm gonna do is very simple. Take my ruler, my marking utensil, and I'm just gonna draw a line from one side to the other. Now. If you weren't watching, I probably would just wing it, but I'm trying to be good. So I'm gonna take two of these, that way I can make sure it's nice and straight. So this is gonna be my star point, so I'm gonna take my piece of fabric and align it on one of those corners and just stitch on that line. All right, and trim that off roughly a quarter of an inch. Doesn't have to be perfect though. Now I've tried to go ahead and add my next point without pressing, but it doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is either iron this or since I'm kind of in a rush, I'm gonna use my little seam roller and that's just gonna help hold it flat and then I can press it all at once. I gotta be very careful with these points because it could stretch it out and I don't wanna get those wonky shaped stars, at least not intentionally. So I have my next one, it's gonna go the opposite direction, line it up, sew on the line and do the same thing again. No, but there's something gratifying about rolling that seam. It's like you're gonna be pressed into submission. Now I have that quarter inch right here, which is good. That's gonna make my points match when my seam allowance gets all figured into that. So I need to repeat that for the other three sides of my star. So four star points, look how nice those are. Now I've rolled the seams, but I do wanna give them a little press right before I assemble the whole block. And trust me, I am never picky about ironing ever. I just, it doesn't matter in my mind. But for this particular one, I, I'm gonna go ahead and press from the back. 
because I find that since I don't iron a lot, I tend to get overzealous about it and I get stretched out points. So I'm trying not to touch these points very much. I'm just trying to flatten that seam where they're at and that's gonna help keep it nice and square. And if it sticks up a little bit, you don't have to make that mouth sound, it just helps me out. I'm gonna just press those last couple blocks, make sure they're nice and flat. They look so pretty. You're gonna be a star. No, really, you are gonna be a star, part of a star. Better to be part of a star than not a star at all. Now, just gotta put them together with other pieces and you'll finally get to see how this comes together. Gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, stay focused, Angela, focus. So our corners are coming back out. Looks good. And since it's scrappy, it doesn't even matter if that's where I had them before. I just need to have them placed in the corners. And then my points are gonna go in between them, like that. There we go. Now you see it, right? And there's the star. All I have to do is sew the blocks into rows, sew the rows together, and I have a star on my hands. And the first star block is done. Isn't that cute? Now I have to say I'm loving scrappy quilts because then everybody gets to participate. I don't have to just pick one or two. I can use all those fun fabrics. But this quilt actually alternates between a star and a nine patch block. So I gotta whip up that nine patch real quick. What's great about the nine patch block is it's like the star block without all the extra work. So I just need nine pieces of fabric and I'm gonna assemble it very much the same way, except without all the star points. Let's see. Hmm, I feel like there's a lot of light blue and a lot of dark blue. I'm just gonna play around with this for a minute. Yeah, I like that better. That, that just feels more harmonious. Now that is a pretty blue color. Okay, what are you doing down there? Nothing, nothing. I'll be up soon. That's too close. And there's that nine patch block. I have to tell you, this is great for beginner quilters. And if you wanna get your fabric fondling on, I actually have a coupon just for you off your next fabric purchase. So the details about that are in the description box below. And since you're already over there, go ahead and subscribe to the video so you don't miss any future episodes. Now, I'm gonna lay this out and start making my quilt. You know what I love about fabric? It feels just as good when it's pieced. I have all the blocks for my first row. I have my nine patch and my star blocks and I'm going to arrange them alternating between them. What's great about it, since it's scrappy, I can rotate it if I think a color will look better. Again, I'm not trying to put too much thought into it, but trying to make it look a little bit more random. Then another star, another nine patch, finally my last star. Now that's a good looking row if I do say so myself. This is actually the first row of blocks, but I have a row of charm squares that are gonna go right above that. You know what time it is, it's time to sew, sew, and sew. I have the first row, the second row, and I even have the next row ready to go. So here you can see it's just a little bit different. This one goes star, nine patch, and this next row is gonna go nine patch star. It kind of offsets them a little bit. Lay flat, very nice. Now I have to just sew these rows together and then I'm gonna give you some great tips on stenciling and even a bonus video all about machine quilting. I can't wait to get to that point, but I gotta put this together first, so I'm gonna get to it. Now my fabric has been appropriately fondled. It's finished, let's stencil. Now when I machine quilt, I don't always use stencils, but I thought it would be fun in this episode to show you how easy it is to get better at free motion quilting using the stencils. So I found a great leafy kind of meander. I have my pounce pad that's gonna help me mark it. Now, if this seems a little too confusing, don't worry about it. I've actually put together a bonus video full of tips and tricks on how to pick out stencils and how to use them. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and mark out my quilts. Now the great thing about stencils is it gives me a path to follow. So especially when I was a newer machine quilter, it was a lot easier to learn how to move the fabric when I already had a line to go along. Now one of the downsides is you have to mark it and that takes a while, but that's all right, we're gonna do it. So now I'm gonna use my pounce pad, get a little tap to get it going, and I'm gonna line the stencil where I wanna quilt the design and I'm just gonna rub that pounce pad on there. And it's really fun to see how far stencils have came. So now instead of those old 
rigid plastic ones, I have these fun screen printed ones. So we're gonna hold it in place and rub it. This is where you kind of hope that it came out right. Oh, good. And as you can see, I have my lines already marked out, ready to go. So I'm gonna put these aside for now and let's get quilting. So I went ahead and spun the quilt around so that you can see the stencil line and it makes it easy for me to see too. So the most important part about quilting with a stencil is I'm gonna look ahead of where I'm at. That means I'm not looking right at the needle, I'm looking on down the line so that I can move smoothly and somewhat closely get on that line. Now the great thing about this is even if that line isn't perfectly quilted on the stencil, once I remove it, it's not even gonna be noticeable. So no one's gonna know it wasn't even perfect and I wouldn't tell them either. Well, I'm gonna finish quilting this part out and then I'm gonna mark some more. Once I run out of those lines, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my next section. And even if I can't get it right next to the design, I can't perfectly line it up, I'm just gonna get it close and then just wing it and get it over there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nice little tap. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and rub that on there. I remember that using stencils is how I learned how to machine quilt. I always wanted to learn how to do a feather. I could never get it down. Finally, I just bought a feather stencil and kept doing it over and over and over again. I still have that feather stencil. I can't get rid of it, although I don't even need it anymore. Pull that off. Perfect. And like I said, if I'm right here and my first line's over there, I'm just going to kind of, we'll say wiggle over to that point and then start quilting my stencil. And what's great about this kind of chalk is once I get done with it, either when the whole quilt is finished or as I go, I can just kind of rub it away and it's just gonna disappear. Don't you wish mistakes worked that way? You make a mistake, you just rub it away and you're like, oh, now it looks fine. Perfect. Now I do like stenciling, but I'm much more of a free motion quilter, so I'm gonna keep quilting this thing without it. And if stenciling isn't your thing, no worries. I've put together some free quilting diagrams to show you how I've quilted this. An up all night version, which is a little bit more custom, and a turn in early, which lets you get the quilt done. I do it because I care. So make sure you head over there and download them, because they're really nice. Anyways, I'm gonna get this finished. I'll see you when I'm done. Do you know what I love? I love that I can sit here and tell you all about how much I love to fondle fabric and you don't even judge me. I've had such a blast working on this quilt from working with stencils, quilting the whole thing with a leafy meander, but best of all, laying out all those beautiful charm squares and beautiful stars. <sighs> So if you need some more fabric to fondle, don't forget we have that coupon code for your next purchase of fabric and all the details for that are in the description box below. And hey, since you're down there, you might as well subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of the Midnight Quilt Show. And be sure to check out that free video we have with bonus tips and tricks on how to stencil your quilt. Well, I'm gonna finish my glass and head to bed. Have a great night.